Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock. And now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. We're talking about overcoming hatred with love. And we've been talking about this and walking through this because it is so needful in the day and time we live in. So needful. I believe it is where we are and it's something that we have to deal with now. So just to be able to overcome an atmosphere, a climate of hatred, you overcome that not with hatred, but you overcome that with love. So we started off talking on uh, the other day where the Bible says to us in Thessalonians five fifteen, don't pay back evil for evil. And then Paul in Romans chapter 12 told us in verse 21, and I love the New Living Translation. It says in Romans 12, 21, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. That's a mouthful. Don't let evil conquer you because it will. Evil will conquer you. It will devour you. It will consume you. It will conquer your thoughts, your thinking. Everything about you will become evil. So the Apostle Paul is saying, don't let it don't let it win. Don't let evil win. Because if you let it win, then it will change you for the worse. And it will not only affect you, but all those that are around you. So don't let it win. Don't let it win. Now, uh... A few days ago, we talked about how winning looks like losing because when you look at Jesus on that tree being crucified, it doesn't look like he is winning, but we know that he won the victory. We know that we are here because of what he did, but he didn't render evil for evil. So we're talking about that. On yesterday, just before we got off the air, we was talking about how the Lord showed us how to overcome hatred with love. He showed us that on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And he told Peter to put up his sword because Peter was ready to fight. Peter was ready uh, to do bodily harm to those that was trying to come and take Jesus. Matter of fact, he cut off the servant Malchus. He cut his ear off. And I don't think he was aiming for the ear. I think he was aiming for his neck. But the ear got in the way. But Jesus put his ear back on. And he told Peter that if you live by the sword, you're going to die by it. And he let Peter know that he could call for 12 legions of angels. 12 legions of angels, Jesus said. Now, that's about 72,000 angels. One angel destroyed 185,000 men we see in the book of Isaiah. One angel dealing with Hezekiah when the angel went and destroyed. One angel destroyed 185,000. Now Jesus is talking about calling 72,000. He is letting Peter know that this is not how we win. It might look like winning, but it's not winning. It's not winning. And many times when we, we might win the conversation at work, we might retaliate and we might bring embarrassment on the other person that was talking about us and it might feel good for a while, but everybody around us, we just lost because the enemy stand back and say, well, that's what Christianity is all about and they just like the other person. So Jesus did what he did and because he did what he did, he changed the world forever. Now, in Acts chapter 2 and in verse 36, I want you to hear this. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus or that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, the reason I'm reading this is because I want you to see that because of what he did on that cross, what he did, when, it, when, when winning looked like losing, 
now he's able to appeal to this vast majority of people. And the people he's talking to are the people that actually crucified him. These are the ones that he says, whom you crucified. The message came to them first. What love, what incredible love, what incredible love that we see. Incredible grace that he would send the first message of the church. The first message Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. The first message that was preached during the church age was to those that crucified him. Now, when they heard it, now, now watch this. It says, now when they heard this, they were cut to their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? See, now, now the ones that crucified him are now ready to become Christians. They're now ready to give their lives to God. So what looked like Jesus was losing, he actually is winning a multitude of souls. And the Bible says on this day, there's 3,000 people that are going to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 3,000. 3,000. So what looked to be losing was actually winning. Let me read the rest of it for you. When they heard this, these are the ones that had crucified him. The Bible says they were cut to the heart, said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, you ought to repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The name that you, name of the person you crucified, that name, that name that God said was going to be highly exalted and he highly exalted the name of Jesus above every name. That's not only in earth, but also in heaven for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you, to your children, to all who are far off as men as the Lord your God shall call. So, so here, the ones that crucified him, we see now that they are being baptized in the name of Jesus, which is taking on the name of Jesus, which is becoming a part of the family, that, that incredible name. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. Hi, I'm Jackie Stewart, and I want to invite you to one of Axe Ministry's best-kept secrets. It's Super Seminar Saturday weekend, Saturday, September the 22nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here at our Axe North Little Rock location. We want to invite everyone to come out and join us for this year's Super Seminar Saturday weekend. Our theme this year is the Sweet Psalms of Israel. Come out and enjoy great seminar speakers, great dance ministries, and presentations all right here. Your registration includes a continental breakfast, a grand luncheon, all seminar materials, workshops, and don't forget the door prizes. So come on out and invite someone to Axe Best Kept Secret Super Seminar Saturday. For more information, contact us at area code 501-329-2055 or 501-375-7700. You may go to our website at axeministriesonline.org or visit us at any of our services. We invite everyone to Super Seminar Saturday Weekend, Saturday, September the 22nd. Come and join us right here at our North Little Rock location. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. But this would never happen if Jesus hadn't died. If Jesus would have called for those legions of angels when he was on the cross, we wouldn't see these souls turning. And, and, and you and myself, we would not have had an opportunity to change our lives if he had rendered evil for evil. And as you read on, the Bible talks about, and with many other words, did Peter testify and exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word was baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 
3,000 souls. Souls are priceless. One soul is more valuable than the sun, S-U-N, or the moon. One soul. Because that's going to pass away. That's not going to exist forever. But one soul on this day, just this one day, there's 3,000. Of the ones that Peter said, whom you crucified, the Jesus you killed, now he's going to give you an opportunity to have eternal life. So, so what looked to be an embarrassment to the Jews, the one that was supposed to come and bring about deliverance and restoration and deliver them from the Romans, now they see that Jesus had to defeat the greater enemy first, and the greater enemy was death, hell, destruction, the grave, and Satan himself. And he took the keys, the Bible says, and he led captivity captive. But he rendered good for evil. Doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. And it doesn't look like winning. All It doesn't look like winning. But that's how we win. And, and, and Paul says to us in the book of 1 Corinthians, he says to us that the weapons are of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're not carnal. What do you mean they're not carnal? They're not physical. This is not how we fight. If we fight like this, we're going to lose. And there are many people that are losing. And brothers and sisters, when I look around today, I see many, many Christians are losing. They're losing. So Paul, Paul is very specific when he says to us, and, and, and that's in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. He comes out and he says to us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now that's, first, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4. So we walk in the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. But we fight against the imaginations and the lies that Satan has placed in the minds of people that he's using them to take them to a place God prepared for him. And that place is hell. To destroy them for all eternity. That's what he's doing. And we might not understand that, but that's what the Bible teaches us. So he says here that we cast down imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought of obedience of Christ. And that's why the world is the way it is today. Because he put a imagination in the mind of Eve. When Eve began to think that she was going to be like God. That was an imagination. That was a high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Satan did that. He says to her, you will not surely die. But God knows that when you do this, when you eat from this tree, you'll know good and evil. You'll know the way God knows. You will be like God. See, that's deception. That's deception. And he's doing the same thing today. Planting thoughts. And the only way we can get those thoughts down is, is use the word of God to pull those thoughts down. Because we don't fight. We don't fight the way uh, ordinary people fight. We don't fight in a carnal way or in a physical way. Because if you do that, you're losing. And we've lost a lot of souls. Let me just, let me just talk to you before we, we, we conclude today. Brothers and sisters, it is a time that we are losing a multiplicity of souls. How valuable is a soul? More valuable than the sun or the moon or stars because it is going to last forever. We know that we won't need the S-U-N because God is going to be the light of the city. That's temporary. We won't need the sun. But a soul is, is eternal. You're more valuable than the moon. You're eternal. You're going to last somewhere forever. And in this culture, in this season, in the climate that we're in, we're causing many men, women, boys and girls to turn their back on Christ because Christianity can never be defined by rendering evil for good. 
just can't happen. Will never happen. So on tomorrow we will we will continue this for the next few days. And today, go and render love for hatred. Render good for something that you see that is evil. God bless you. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.